recording. Beautiful. Just look into that, right? Look straight down into that. That's thank it. you. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you, guys, for the opportunity to present here. Um, I met Cyril uh, Burke three years ago, and I was in Melbourne at the time, and I was in a an old house in Northcote, and I couldn't sleep, I couldn't walk, and I said, mate, what's going on? And he basically explained exactly what he explained to you guys. So after la over the last um, three years, I've been slowly making the changes for myself and seeing the benefit. I've had two autoimmune conditions in my life. Um, I was gonna say damaged, but I won't say anything about the V, <laughs> whatever you wanna to say to that. Um, so I've had to do a lot of things to try and detoxify. I've had heavy metal damage. So I'm a bit of a canary in the coal mine, so I can actually feel the EMF when I go into different places. And I felt it here when I came here the first time, and I said to Adrian, I feel something here. But that's part of the story. The other part of the story is I used to work in lighting. So I was a lighting rep, traveling the country, selling LED lighting. And I came across a professor, um, Dr. Jack Cruz, who's a neurosurgeon, online and um, he spoke about how lo how light we're, we're interacting with light all the time and light, and light is an EMF just like Cyril mentioned and very very important to our biological function and being someone who's soul lighting that was very intriguing to me and I wanted to understand as if the lighting I'd been selling <laughs> was a dud you know was what's how is it affecting us and it ends up it's, it actually affects us a lot um, Dr. Alexander Wunsch is a, a photobiology expert, so that's someone who understands how light affects cells and health. And basically he's uh, postulized that one third of the energy your body consumes comes from the food you eat and then the vast majority of energy your body needs to maintain its function comes from near infrared light. Does anyone know what near infrared light is? No. It's the unseen portion that you get from the visible spectrum of light. So if Cyril had a uh, a map of the EMF, you have all the EMFs across the board and the light is in a very narrow band, UV at the beginning, near infrared at the end and then the visible spectrum that we can see. So basically he's saying that this near infrared light that you cannot see runs two thirds of your metabolism and no one knows about it. <laughs> um, Robert Becker, so love to quote Robert Becker. If you can get a book, his book's called Body Electric. I would, it's this thick, but I'd really recommend like electricians and people who study and want to know in depth to get his book because what he found was um, marsupials. Oh, what, what did he have? He had um, little antichinus, little lizards. You know how lizards drop their tail and drop their, their limbs, but they grow back? The source of where they grow back is very low voltage electricity. So he, he basically came up with a theory, well it's more than a theory, it's, it's truth, that basically voltage sets out in your healing, in those healing areas to heal you. So the body gets a signal to bring out low voltage to start that healing process. So the healing response was identified as a DC electrical current, so any electricians here know about DC. They didn't build it, they've got an AC power grid that they built on top of us, not a DC one. Total opposite, and obviously we've got a spiritual element here, and I've been in church for about 20 years, and two years ago I picked up that scripture, the prince of the power of the air, and I thought, hang on, what's this? This is power and air, and I thought, hang on, <laughs> am I putting, what dots do you want me to put together here? So I don't know where you guys sit with that, but I'm very, very inclined to think that this was built on top of us for a reason, and how we have to unwind from that. So basically, like Cyril said, your cells and your metabolism use uh, like a battery like you can recharge your battery using light dr john ott um was half his life he was a cinematographer he created time lapse photography um, you might have seen some of the disney videos where there's time lapse flowers opening and shutting um, what he did was find out that when he filtered out certain frequencies of light the flowers wouldn't open the uh, the animals drop their skin or their coats. Um, he was doing testing with you know pink light only, how that affected rats and mice in their circadian rhythms. When without the full spectrum, you'd have all these issues with metabolism and how nature worked. So when I come back to the point of the lighting I was selling, the new LED lighting is mainly blue light or green light. <coughs> Has none of the other frequencies in it. So it's very, very narrow. And when he did studies on that type of light, he found that 
there was a lot of health issues. So he pioneered the work, so that's Health and Light, I'd highly recommend that book. So he pioneered the work into full spectrum light and its effects on uh, cells, animals, plants. And actually in the 80s they got full spectrum lighting into schools in California and they found attention deficit uh, was reduced, um, uh, memory and retention and, and scholastic, impro uh, scholastic results improved and even dental records improved. Absolutely crazy, just switching the light out. But it makes sense, right, when I say we're tuned to light and all our metabolism tuned to light. So if we put ourselves in a very narrow band of, of light, uh, we get problems. This is a very interesting slide. So you have the, the plant blood cell and the human blood cell, very similar, right? The only difference is there's magnesium to make it green in the plant, and we've got iron and ours that make it red. But the structure's the same. Wow. Strikingly similar to chlorophyll in plants. So we need a, a paradigm shift around light. So John Ott uh, coined the term um, malillumination. So basically we, we have to understand that, we understand a lot about diet, I suppose at Invent Adventist circles we understand diet, but we don't understand that light, you need near infrared light in the full light spectrum to help catalyze how your body metabolizes each nutrient. So he coined the term malillumination is that why we're being told to stay indoors? Exactly. Stay indoors with your wi I've got a Wi-Fi slide in here, it'll blow your mind. <clears throat> stay indoors, have your Wi-Fi, and have your blue light on till like 10, 8, 10 p.m. and destroy your melatonin. Simple as that. Um, this, I don't know if that's an Adventist sanitarium. I'm not sure what that one is. This is a sanitarium in the Alps in, um, in Switzerland. This is uh, pioneering doctors like Auguste Rullier and Niels Finson. So they basically knew that living beings needed to regenerate with U light, but also UV light specifically. And they had these types of um, clinics where people would come, obviously, get as much of their, their skin uh, in, the, in the sunlight as possible. And he used red light to treat smallpox back in 1893. And they went on to treat lupus with UV light back in the 1900s, and he received a Nobel Prize in 1903, <laughs> which no one would ever know about. That's not in the mainstream. <laughs> <laughs> you can treat smallpox with light. Yes. You can treat lupus with sunlight. Yes. So the, the way it helps um, the immune system is it helps sunlight energizes the T cells, the T regulator cells that uh, control the immunity. Also creates redox molecules, creates hydrogen peroxide. So we, we know a bit about redox here. And I've always said you can create certain redox molecules of light. So you need light to strengthen your immune system. It's interesting during, during CVID, in the last two years, in, um, in New York they were using UV lamps to clean um, the buses and the railways and the hospitals. So something about UV light. It's very good to sterilize bacteria. This is not the Sunshine Coast University Hospital. This is like 1920, treating TB, rickets, jaundice in children. If you go to hospital these days, you want to get out of there as quickly as you can. Like, yeah. Totally. Like, get in for your operation, get out, start. Yeah, so that's, you know, I've been in a hospital for major surgery. <laughs> I don't want to go in there again. So this is interesting. Uh, yeah, obviously very, very popular, pop, popular in the day, but sort of gone out of favour. Again, research, as I said before, research shows ingested foods and vitamins require specific wavelengths. So specific nutrients have specific resonant frequencies of light they work with to catalyze and absorb, which is really interesting. Because most of us go, you know, we'll take this vitamin or this food and we're fine. But if you're locked up in your office under blue light, it's not going to be good. So are you still taking your vitamins in the dark? Um, metabolic syndrome, this would cover most of the major um, health issues that we'd have in this country. But basically light can penetrate uh, the cells right down into the fat, deep into the fat cells, deep into the skin. As Cyril mentioned, your, your skin has receptors for light and that will alter how your metabol metabolism behaves including obviously heart disease, cholesterol, Type 2 diabetes, you need light, you need UV light to synthesize cholesterol. If you can't synthesize cholesterol, you know, it's going to bank up in your system. It's going to get in your arteries. You know, you're going to have hormones banking up in your prostate, um, in your breasts. 
you need to synthesize it. This is amazing. Um, photobiomodulation is very, very, a term that's coming more into the mainstream and it means how, as I said, how light affects your cells. They found that 98% of sunlight enters the body through the eye and you can actually affect your blood chemistry because all your blood runs by the eye every two hours. So your whole blood stream runs through your eye and processes through your eye every two hours. And you need light in your eye to help so, that so system. Don't wear dark sunglasses. I never wear sunglasses. I mean, it's ridiculous. You don't want to be blocking UV light from your eyes. I'll go into that. I'll go into that in a couple of slides time. So basically, this is called photobiomodulation. It's coming to the mainstream. Anyone see any stories from the ABC with a lady with a bucket, red light bucket on their head like that at all? Okay. Right, this is a story. So there was a politician in Tasmania who was suffering from Parkinson's disease and he'd been through all the myriad of um, medications that his doctor was able to put him on. He started to lose his uh, sense of taste and smell and fine motor movements. There's nowhere to go. You get to the end, no more meds to take. Um, she was doing some research because she was retiring and looking further into the alternative space and found in the University of Sydney they were doing research on mice models for neuroregeneration using red and near-infrared light. They rang the uni up and said, can Max be part of a trial? And the professor said, there's no human trials and won't be for about 10 years. And he said, well, I'll be dead by then. They, went, they then went and engaged the men's shed in Tasmania to build the helmet of which he used for 40 minutes every day for the next three months and his symptoms disappeared. Mm -hmm. They then went back to the uni and there was two human studies done in 2020 in Sydney and Adelaide. So citizen science, the bloke, you know, the front door's shut. No, I, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna barge through the front door and I'm gonna try and change you know, the status quo. Unfortunately, we know with the status quo, they do research and they do studies, but that gets buried in a concrete vault never to see the light of day like you know Adrian so I spoke to the guy making these helmets and they they got 800 orders after the ABC ran the, ran the video from around the world and I said to him what about the TGA like are you putting any notices of liability in this box yeah we'll just put a little thing this is not for medical use I'm like mm, not sure if I can back that horse um, but we, Cyril and I recently found um, the company who designed the helmets for the trials and they're available in Australia, I think they're like $600 a helmet. So basically, they use that very specifically for, for brain toxic, to as Cyril mentioned, all these, all these conditions are actually, you're, they've been unable to detoxify their brain for about 20 years and this is the end result. So a low melatonin state. Um, the biohacking world and the alternative health world, world is getting into red and near infrared light panels like this athlete here. So that helps you improve sleep, heal injuries, fight depression. Something about red and near infrared light is very, very uh, important and very powerful. I used to wear uh, prescription glasses, which after um, learning Dr. Jack Cruz's work, I thought I'm going to do some experiments here. I'm going to watch the sunrise because he recommended watch the sunrise. When you watch the sunrise, it's mainly red and near infrared light. There's no UV. So you're getting a massive hit of this red and really healing red and red and near infrared light. And then I used my orange glasses to block any artificial light at night. And my eyes regenerated within about six weeks. That's after prescription for 10 years. Seriously. Stargazing? No, no, I was looking at the sun, the sunrise. And then I was blocking UV, uh, artificial blue light at night. Please do not look at the sun once it's left the No, yeah, you've got to look at the side. Once it's up the set, sorry, thank you. Don't look at the sun. Anyway, it's very, very important. So based on what I've just told you about light interacting with your metabolism, with your eyes, with your skin, with your brain, how does it fit us living in these types of environments? So two thirds of our lives we're living under these artificial lights and environments without no, any awareness of consequences. So our awareness has gone up regarding organic food and supplements and clean air and water, which are all important, all part of eight laws, laws of health. But there's no understanding of malillumination, hardly any. And what are the implications? 
So some of the implications, has anyone heard of circadian rhythm? So we're, there's programs of information built into us that fire off when we get certain signals from sunrise to sundown. Basically working by your eye and your skin to give a message to your brain to release certain hormones. Do I release a sleep hormone? Do I release a stress hormone or a, a cortisol hormone? That generates and works on sleep, appetite, mood, libido, many other things by a little clock in the middle of your brain. So we need to know, we need to get the right type of light during the right times of day to make sure these systems are kicking in. This is a, Cyril mentioned about melatonin, so important. You actually build melatonin via your eyes being exposed to certain amounts of morning sunlight at a certain time. Cyril might know, I don't know where he's gone. Yeah. Oh, Cyril, <laughs> where's Cyril? Cyril, what time is it during the day? It's a certain time during First the day, 30, right? 34 degrees. 34 degrees. So it's from when it crosses. You've got 34 degrees are the most effective for building the precursors. So we need so a sundial. You're not actually making melatonin. Your body makes precursors, melatonin. Precursors, that's right. And you're Serotonin. Precursors. Yes. So it catalyzes and makes melatonin. A question. Would, would the same angle be for the sunset as well? Like the same sort of light coming from the sunset the, as well as the sunrise? No, no, it's sunny sunrise. It's not sunset. It's the light. The light's different. So the light's different. So basically, melatonin controls all of those systems that Cyril mentioned about how your cells turn over. So when you're sleeping at night, you need, you need optimum melatonin to sleep and regenerate your whole system and give you energy and allow your mitochondria to make uh, energy and turn off the nuclear genome, which is the faulty genes that all the other stuff's trying to turn on. Melatonin will do that. But like Cyril said, all this EMF is destroying your melatonin. And the blue light's destroying melatonin. So two things are doing it. Artificial blue light at night and all the EMF you're living in. It's destroying melatonin. So this is the nice day and night cycle that we need to be in when it comes to cortisol and melatonin. So when you wake up in the morning, you get that light in your eye, Sorry, obviously you get the melatonin will start to kick in and then around about uh, you know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock when you're most productive, you get the big spike in cortisol to help you push through the day and give you energy. And then as the sun's going down, you want the opposite to happen. But because of the EMF and the light situation that we're living in, that doesn't happen. It's the reverse of that. You've got the cortisol on the red line and you've got the melatonin on the black line after, you know, in the night. So essentially, too much blue light and EMF at night, your chemical or chemistry, body chemistry, thinks it's 4 p.m. when it's 9 p.m. It thinks you're in the afternoon when you can't get to sleep. Or you can't, you're in like early stages of sleep. You're never in REM sleep. Never in REM sleep. That's what Cyril mentioned and what we brought out. And this is, speaks to Max Burr, the politician. The suggest, uh, study suggests sleep Sleep clears the brain, so the melatonin helps the brain detoxify it, reduces to about 60% of its size, and then the lymphatic system will flush the brain. That's how you stave off Alzheimer's. It's not necessarily doing puzzles and crosswords, which is good, but if you haven't got enough melatonin to detox your brain, it doesn't matter how many crosswords you're doing. Dead set. This is the reason why it's a problem. In that very narrow spectrum of blue light, where everything is designed into, you get visualized strain, macular degeneration, and sleep disruption. And every single piece of equipment and thing, and most of the lighting you've got in your um, houses is in that narrow band. It doesn't include any of the other um, frequencies that are, that are made into nature. So thank you, engineers. Sorry, sorry, it's a good engineer. <laughs> thank you, engineers, for, for making humans, what do they call them, white space. We are white space. The engineers. They get the solution, but we don't exist in the middle of that. I pull a lot of information down from the ABC because, thank you, Auntie, don't they call it Auntie? When I do talks, if I pull stuff from America, people go, oh, that's in Sweden, that's in America, da da da. So this is all from the ABC. So experts say exposure to artificial light from tablets is causing sleep disorders. So basically, a very low level of lux from your mobile phone compounded nightly over seven days delays your circadian clock and suppresses melatonin. So consider 
when you're using technology at night, either protect your eyes or put an app on it to make sure you're not getting exposed to that blue light that's affecting your melatonin. Now, I've lost a slide there, oh, lost something there. Um, I've lost this, but this is really, really important. Researchers found that antidepressants were less effective in those who had no regard for, for their light in circadian cycles, whereas those uh, people on antidepressants who were very mindful of getting sun in the morning, blocking blue light at night, were very stable on their medications. And this comes back to the point that I made that you need light to help metabolize everything, including your medication, otherwise it doesn't work properly. Uh, this, this are, these are studies from another country. This is Professor Haim out of Israel. Basically, he found that he was the first to examine uh, melatonin suppression in different types of light bulbs, prim primarily outdoor lighting, so street lighting. And they found that um, melatonin degradation was as much as 10 times greater in children than adults because their eyes are more sensitive. And he actually declared that Besides genetic factors, lighting was the most important contributing factor to cancer, besides genetic factors, blue light. Um, some of the recommendations from these studies were that they wanted lighting companies to, and the FDA and whoever controls you know, manufacturing to, to put on the, the, the bulbs that this causes hormonal disruption, da 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 da. That's never going to happen. That's never, ever going to happen unless you've got hundreds of thousands of people saying, we want this. So that's why I was trying to find someone who was going to build better lighting. We actually did find someone in New Zealand who's done that. So apart from the blue light, conventional lighting, fluorescent lighting, LED bulbs, also have the flicker effect, which is part of that 50 hertz. When it's plugged into the power grid, it's going on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Your eyes can't see that, but your brain can. And that's where those meta you're, you're basically wearing your brain out and creating more metabolites and more stuff for your brain to detoxify. You see how terrible vicious circle that is? On one hand, it's causing metabolites in your brain in the daytime, you're under it at nighttime, and it won't release the melatonin to detox from the metabolite. It's a terrible, terrible uh, situation. So most of us have had double vision, headaches, migraines, you know, on screens. They're the, they're the real. Uh, I mentioned that autistic, so it's repetitive behavior in autistic uh, children and people as well. It's, it's so energy dense. <coughs> it's a little bit of a, 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 a slide about um, the spectrums of light. So you have to see how daylight has that really nice curve and balance between blue light and green light and red light. When they tried to re-engineer things, the old incandescent bulb gave a lot of red light, which was better, but there's not enough blue light in it to light the daytime if you're indoors. Look at fluorescent. Oh my goodness, that's from the devil. Seriously. It's got two horns. It's got two horns. It's nowhere near daylight. That is shocking. If I stand up under one of them, my head is banging. Halogen was a little bit better. So halogen and incandescent. Essentially, they're phasing all of these out. They're either illegal and you can't get them. So they've replaced everything with cool white. The electrician will replace things with cool white or warm white LED. Look at that massive blue light spike in the cool white. And then the warm white's got too much green and both depress melatonin. The electrician will usually say, get the warm white because it's less stark and, and warmer and easier for the eye. But it's still, it's too much green. It'll, it'll still de degrade your melatonin at night. So this is not just coming from me, this is coming from senior professors. This is a professor of psychology, lecturer at Monash University, saying we need a new dawn in circadian health and circadian lighting. This is from the university. And we know research is good and research happens, but it never gets down to the field. It never gets down to the, the plebs down here. So I basically hypothesize, you know, LED lighting superseded the incandescent. We want to save the world, we want to reduce the carbon, blah, 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 we want needs to be eco-friendly, but they're killing us. So how can we best merge technology with more human-centric features that are less health, uh, more healthy and less toxic? Um, even electricians are calling for near-infrared to be added to lighting. This is an LED professional magazine. We have done it. I found a company in New Zealand who's reverse-engineered all these things. Um, I don't know if that's, that might not play. But that's, I've got a demo here of that light, which I'll show you guys afterwards. 
Um, so be mindful, use glasses, use your blocking glasses, use the sleep lamps. I think Cyril was talking to Jeff about the sleep lamp. These are all over there. Can you just explain the blocking glasses? So the, the blocking glasses are an orange or a red tint that block the blue and the green light from entering the eye. So all you're getting is the other part of the spectrum. So it allows the body to think it's in darkness. So you're reducing the amount of blue. The brain thinks I'm in darkness. I need to excrete melatonin. I need to go to sleep. So I had one of my clients, he was an 85 year old gentleman on melatonin capsules for months and months, getting headaches, nightmares. I said, let's try the orange blocking glasses, obviously go out in the sun in the morning. Within two weeks on the orange, virtually a week and a half, on the orange blocking glasses, he was off the melatonin and sleeping within an hour or two of putting the glasses on. He didn't need the melatonin, so. That's the lot, I'm gonna quickly get through these, talk, these slides because I know, you know, we've been here for a bit. That's all about lo um, like lighting. I wanna mention a little bit about UV light because UV light's very demonized, especially in Australia. I'm from the UK originally. I'm lucky to have like a Roman Mediterranean skin, so I just go and tan up and there's no problem whatsoever, but slip slop slap was everywhere in the 90s, right? Like skin cancer's gonna kill you. I, it's sort of ramped up a little bit now and they're talking about don't let the sun touch your DNA. There's a lot of ads on about that in Western Australia, like it's on in trains. But UV light is very, very important, especially for activating your hormones. So, as I said, melatonin, serotonin, dopamine, and our beta endorphin, endocannabinoids. We all know about CBD. You can make that stuff in your brain. You're an apocryphary, you just need the right frequencies. And UV light's part of that. Our sort of male. Um, Obsession with sunscreen, it's all coming out now that's very toxic. Um, sunscreen blocks 92% of the UVB that makes vitamin D. So you become vitamin D deficient, too much sunscreen. Um, use of sunglasses block UVA and UVB. And if you've got lenses like contact lenses and things and glasses, I'd always go and check the optometrist to see if they've got UV filters on them, because you don't want that. You don't want to be filtering UV light because it's got so many interactions uh, by your skin. Um, there's also studies showing, uh, what's that one? There's one that shows that indoor workers have a high incidence of melanoma than outdoor because you're not preparing the skin properly with light to then deal with the UV. It's craziness, absolutely crazy. So this is, this was like a big slap in the face when I found this one. This is Curtin University in Western Australia. This is Australia during winter time. This is the percentage of people who are vitamin D deficient in Australia. So obviously the further south you go, the worse it is. It's like 49% in Victoria, 28% in Western Australia, obviously less here. Um, but these studies are based on, I would probably find suboptimal ranges. The optimal ranges for vitamin D are way up in the hundreds, like 100 nanomoles, 150 nanomoles. You might have seen some of the the CV19 stuff, they're talking about 150 nanomoles being the protective. Uh, go to the doctor, if you're over 45, you'll say you're fine. See you later. So testing vitamin D, optimizing that is super crucial because vitamin D controls a lot of things in the body. Um, vitamin D is a, is a hormone, steroid hormone. You've got 33,000 genes and vitamin D affects 10% of those, including 300 genes in the human breast tissue alone. If you're a woman, your vitamin D level is important because that's controlling all those on-off gene switches in your breast tissue. So as I said, this is from actually Dr. McCullough and I've converted it down to the Australian measurement. So deficient, deficient in optimum terms is less than 125 or less than 100. And to treat cancer and heart disease, 175 to 250 excess is over 250, but cancer and heart disease, 175 to 250 nanomoles in the blood all cause mortality linked to low vitamin D levels. Stay inside, have your Wi-Fi on, have your blue light on. <laughs> I wonder what people's vitamin D levels are coming out of two years of indoors. So these are all risk factors, diseases associated with levels below 100 nanomoles. When I was seeing clients, I saw one over 90. Now, one, one person had 90 nanomoles. Everyone was subpar. If you have autoimmune like me, you'll be in the 30s. You'd be in the 40s and you're lined up for all this. 
cancer of all types. Autoimmune conditions, I've had two. Usually there's some sort of genetic factor where the cells cannot take up vitamin D into the cell. The receptor's faulty, so you've got to do a lot more work. I take a vitamin D that's actually, um, it bypasses my liver and my kidneys and it goes straight to my bloodstream. And I was able to put my levels up into that really optimum 159 level really quickly from being down to 42. So I had a protective level somewhat. This is the biggest takeaway from today. Your Wi-Fi affects the resonance of the vitamin D receptor and your ability to take vitamin D in your cells and you have receptors on every single cell of your body for vitamin D. So when I was in here on Saturday, I said hardwire the place. And I saw I mentioned turn down the power, or just hardwire it, if you can. Yep. You're infer interfering with your vitamin D. You don't want to be doing that. That's by design, seriously. Seriously, seriously, seriously. D for diabolical. 100%. Yes. Um, I've had Crohn's disease, so a lot of gut issues. I've actually had surgery for my Crohn's. Vitamin D helps keep the brush border or the, the tight junctions very in the bowel tight. If I open up, you get a lot of uh, uh, food and blood going through your blood brain, uh, across to the bloodstream, causing a lot of autoimmune reactivation. And isn't it funny, keeping good light dark cycles and circadian rhythms helps that gut lining because it should repair every 24 to 48 hours. It doesn't in us, it takes a week. That's why we've got gut issues all the time because our, our gut lining isn't repairing. There's a, there's a tribe in Africa, in, in Tanzania, there's a guy doing some research, part of the Human Gut Project, and he's, he's testing how their microbiome is in their environment. And they eat rubbish too. They smoke, drink, smoke pot, drink alcohol. And he's got this test group against this, this, these two groups. And he found that even if they abuse themselves, because they're on the equator, they're grounded with no shoes on, and they've got all this UV light, their gut lining stays perfectly intact and regenerates every 24 hours. So when they have antibiotics, it doesn't mess up with their microbiome. He was going to do a really diabol diabolical, diabolical, uh, he's going to do a diabolical um, experiment. He was going to bring them to New York and see how they went in that environment. I don't think that happened. I think COVID hit and he couldn't bring them here. Interesting with um, immune, autoimmune, um, with lupus sufferers, they tell them not to go outside in the light because yeah. the light will make them. Yeah. Well, you have to build, you have to build, you have to build the skin's yeah. ability through red and red and near infrared light, so more afternoon light, to prepare for the UV. Uh, this is a really interesting study. The sun can shine out of your rear. Oh, you know, this is another that. thing. So they did. Um, <laughs> You know, the, you know the common saying, you know, that the shun, you know, some people think this happens, right? Like, those in power think this happens. This is what they're doing. So basically, they had two groups of women, and one were taking supplements, and the other had stomach exposed to UV light, and basically their microbiome became more um, diverse over a period of time, like six weeks, just by having their, their skin exposed to the UV. Um... Yeah, like you said, vitamin D mediates that change and can affect... UVB light has a lot of effect on inflammatory diseases like MS and vitamin D. So as, as part of the takeaway to try and get more light into your general daytime, is, you know, I usually say 10 to 20 minutes in the morning, 10 to 20 minutes in midday, 10 to 20 minutes in the afternoon. It's very simple. Um, and try and get some exposure, you know, like if you've got a backyard, you can get gear off as much as you can. Um, be like the Sphinx, that means make sure you're grounded, so take your shoes off and take your sunglasses off and your contact lenses off. Um, nighttime strategies, obviously try and reduce the amount of technology you're on, but you can use blocking glasses, apps on the phone, that's a triple click on the, if you've got an iPhone, there's an inbuilt program where you triple click and it goes all red. You can YouTube that, and obviously I've got light bulbs that can bring a nice ambient um, uh, feel down into the bedrooms. You, get, you mentioned Iris Tech? Uh, sorry, Iris is a good app for the laptop and the phone. And Adrian, you were just... We just mucking, installed it on all our devices. You were mucking with, uh, around with that. What I said to Adrian is, is install Iris because usually what 
the technology that's in built into the phone, like the night mode, when you actually test that with a spectrometer, it's no good. There's still large amounts of blue light coming out of it. Um, so from my point of view, I run a couple of different situations, diagnostic health solutions. I work with a clinical nutritionist. Sorry, do you have to go? Can I just get through the last two slides and I'll pick you up? Yeah, sorry, you're in my eye line and I'm like, hello. Um, so I work with a clinical nutritionist. If anyone wants to look at doing hormone panels, vitamin D testing, heavy metal testing, chemical testing, we do all that. We do practitioner grade supplements and ordering service, so that's through Diagnostic Health Solutions. Then the BioLite, which I've got some cards for here, is www.bio-light.co. I've got a link to where you can get all the, the lamps, the lights. Uh, the, there's therapy devices on there, therapy panels, like I mentioned, for uh, red and near infrared light, and there's a discount code there for putting into the cart. Cool, yes, your question. Sorry for ignoring you. Yes, sorry, thank you for bringing that up. The glass will filter the UVB. Yeah. But you have to be outside. You have to be outside. Yeah, it's better because of visual and how you feel, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, definitely go outside. So um, just cut the days, cut your breaks up. Or if you can, what I do, I'm on a veranda, hardwired, and I'm outside all the time on the veranda. So I've hardwired my, my laptop to be outside. I just this is stuff I was wasn't doing, and you just it's taken two or three years to entrain EMF stuff, the light stuff, and I definitely yeah, the winter. <laughs> the winter, yeah. yeah. But we've got some solutions. We've got some lighting there, and there's things you can put in that add some of those missing frequencies. Come to Queensland. The Queensland. <laughs> well, what am I thinking? Winter. <laughs> yeah, winter for me is like young. winter for me is like 24. Um, <laughs> Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the opportunity. And yeah, oh, you probably got a lot of questions, but we can come and do demos of this, the lights and the filters down here. Thank you very much. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.